The thing about a Stratocaster is it's probably the easiest guitar to assemble. The entire guitar can be assembled and disassembled basically with a Phillips head screwdriver. So you understand that the average hobbyist player and semi-professional players can take these apart and mod these uh, like crazy. In fact, it's very rare to see a used Strat that hasn't been modified or messed with in some way. And I mean that in a positive way and a negative way. So I did a video about a week ago on how to inspect the Gibson Les Paul. You guys liked that video so much that you requested I do another one, this one on the Stratocaster. So again, I've included a free PDF sheet down below that you can click and check out. And all the other sheets that we do on this channel are also available at uh, knowyourgear.net. And again, that link is down below. Before we get started with this, I wanna explain we're not talking about vintage Stratocasters. Just like the Gibson video, vintage is a different category. So if you're looking at old vintage guitars, please don't apply most of the stuff you're hearing in this. This is really just more modern and semi-modern versions. Now, if you have a vintage reissue guitar from Fender, most likely you will have the truss rod adjustment here at the base of the neck, and you'll use a Phillips head screwdriver uh, to go ahead and, and turn that, but you have to take the neck off. Now, if you have a truss rod adjustment at the top of your Stratocaster, basically, if you have an older made in America one, it'll be a 3 16 However, the newer made in Mexico's are also 3 16 The new USA Fender guitars are 1 8 But here is the good news. All of the import necks should be a four millimeter uh, adjustment. So the Allen wrench that goes in there will be four millimeter. So that's what you wanna look for. Don't worry about whether it's the 3 16 or the uh, 1 8 Pay attention that it's not the four millimeter because the four millimeter usually implies some kind of import neck. That will kinda let you know that you're probably looking at some kind of aftermarket neck that they put Fender logos on. Another thing that's important when you're checking out the uh, headstock is to go ahead and look at the, where the truss rod is placed. Walnut, where you put that in there. If it's made in Mexico, it'll be a piece of like black plastic. So now the, again, there's gonna be variations of this, but this is pretty, pretty consistent so that to the point where you can notice that if you notice that you have walnut sticking out of the headstock of the truss rod cavity, you know you're looking at a Made in America, and again, black plastic for Made in Mexico. The next thing we wanna look at is to make sure the truss rod is not stripped or damaged. This is really common, so you know. Uh, uh, players get in there, they, they use the wrong Allen wrench, they strip the truss rod or damage the truss rod, and now they wanna sell the guitar off. That's why it's important to check. Very, it's been a very common repair I've seen where somebody's brought in a guitar that they bought and they can't adjust the truss rod, it's all stripped out. We have to go ahead and remove that piece and fix it. Um, it can be fixed. It depends on the type of damage, how expensive that is, but it can be fixed. But it's really nice if you don't have to deal with that. It's a pretty simple thing to do. You can just stick the, uh, the Allen wrench in there and check it, make sure it's the right size and it fits correctly. The tuning keys, whether what kind of tuning keys they are, should have the Fender logos. These are locking keys, but whether or not you don't have the locking keys or not, there should be a Fender F or a Fender logo on them. Generally speaking, you're never going to see uh, Fender tuning keys with the... Uh, the screw on the side or any kind of screw mount, they'll be kind of compression fit like these are. In other words, there's there's a nut on the top and through turning that, they go right through. Now we wanna check out the electronics and I know what you're thinking, you gotta take the assembly out and look inside the electronics and that's actually not true. The first thing you wanna do is check the five-way switch. Whether it's made in Mexico or made in the USA, the five-way switch should be a high quality switch, uh, either made in Mexico or made in the USA. And the fastest way I can detect that is to go ahead and remove the switch tip. The switch tip should have a plus sign and the plus sign should be equal in thickness in both directions. And it should actually work no matter which way you turn it. Now, the next thing you can do is check the electronics is just go ahead and take one of the plastic knobs off the tone controls or the volume knob and measure the inside part of the nut. Uh, and it should give you 10 millimeters. And if it's a Chinese part or if it's an import part, cheap part, it'll be eight millimeters. So you'll notice that there's an issue there. This is the wrong potentiometer. Now, if you do take the electronics out, what you should see is a large potentiometer with a pin in the middle of it. Now, pickups, I know what you're thinking. Again, we gotta take them out and check them. Well, actually, no, not in this case. What we're gonna do is take a guitar cable, go ahead and plug it into any strat, Turn the switch to the bridge position and turn all three knobs full forward, so your tone controls. And then what we're gonna do is take a multimeter. You want the ground to the shaft of the cable and you want the hot to the tip. Okay, go ahead and turn your multimeter on and make sure it's set to ohms. And this pickup is reading 6.4. Let's go ahead and go to the middle one. 6.13, let's go to the neck one. 
6.16. So what's great about it on this particular model is I went and looked up the model specifications and those numbers are actually within range of what the manufacturer said these pickups should be. So if you look up the Strat and it has Texas Specials or if it has a vintage style pickup or if it has old, the, the older American uh, single coils or even made Mexico single coils, go ahead and hook it up to your multimeter and then go ahead and do that test. Now again, not definitive proof, but I would imagine if somebody swapped the pickups, they're not gonna be anywhere close. They might've put a hotter pickup or a, a quieter pickup in here. and What's great is if it is reading a little off and it's not exactly what it should say, that's when you know to open it up and start taking a look. Now in the next category, we're gonna do the neck inspection and that's super easy. Just hold the guitar like I am, run your two fingers along the side, just like this, just like you're feeling how, like almost like you wanna see how wide the neck is. Go ahead, don't push a lot, uh, you don't have to push very hard, just slide your fingers down and you're looking for what's called fret sprout. Now fret sprout is when the frets are cut and rounded off, they're cut to the width of this neck and as the neck is continues to shrink, because it's wood, the metal protrudes out. We call that sprouting out. And you'll feel those and they'll feel like little teeth or barbs and that's something that has to be addressed. Does that mean you shouldn't buy the guitar? No, I think the biggest misconception is that cheap guitars have fret sprout and nice guitars don't. Uh, where I live, where it's so dry, I've done $10,000 guitars with fret sprout. But the good news is, that if you correct it and, and uh, file it and polish it, uh, it shouldn't do it again. It's very, very rare to see a neck shrink, the frets sprout out, you polish them and taper them down and then shrink again. Uh, it's just not likely. It's definitely not gonna expand out, but it's not likely it'll shrink again. The other thing you can tell to find out if a neck's been uh, kind of shrank down is to check the fret dots. And all, this is simple, just go ahead and open the strings like I am right now and just rub your finger over the fret dots. You should not feel them at all. In fact, don't look, just kind of, not look at them and rub back and forth on them um, because again, you shouldn't be able to feel them. Again, these are none of these are don't buy situations. Just be aware if these things are happening, it should affect the cost of the guitar or at least make you aware what you're gonna have to do to fix them. Uh, fret dots lifting out of the neck again are super common. Another thing common with uh, fenders is the skunk stripe lifting out. Uh, because the rate of the maple and the walnut dry at different rates, sometimes it can lift out and that will have to be addressed and fixed as well. S generally speaking, Speaking, you're just going to sand that, but it's a little tricky uh, because sometimes it may involve a refinish on the neck. Now, especially if the strat's a little older, we want to look uh, along the sides of each fret and look for chips or filler. Uh, filler will look like uh, like a like a little piece of putty stuck in there. It will be a little discolored from the wood. More common on the rosewood, less common on the maple, but. Either way, you're looking for little chips and marks and why that, what you're looking for is to see if somebody has refretted the guitar. Again, if it's a good refret, it shouldn't hurt the value of the guitar too much, especially since it's not a vintage guitar. It's just, now it's a tell sign to know if the frets have been changed, who did those frets, what kind of frets did they use? How accurate is it? Is it different fret wire? You know what I mean? It's just good to know stuff. And again, this is more about just educating yourself on the guitar, not necessarily saying, okay, if it's this way, it's bad. If it's this way, it's good. Now, once we do that, let's go ahead and check it one note at a time. Just pluck each note. And we're looking for any dead spots uh, where it buzzes, twists in the neck. Again, that's a pretty easy thing to do. You can sight the neck. We did that in the last video where we hold it like this. And now what we're doing is using the, the high E string and the low E string as a straight line of sight. So we're gonna look at that straight. And then we're gonna look at how well the neck, each fret lines up against that line of sight. So that's what we're looking at. Look at that string and make sure that the frets feel like they're right there with it. If you see any under bow or over bow where the neck is pulled back a little bit, or if there's a gap in the center, uh, that can be addressed with as easy as a adjustment to the neck. But sometimes if you're looking at one side and it looks right and the other side looks a little, little wonky jaw there, uh, you could have a twist in the neck. The other thing we wanna look for is fret wear. That will be divots in the fret. That's really important. You're gonna see that a lot. That'll tell you whether or not a uh, guitar needs to be fret and leveled. If it's a vintage fret, uh, if it's a vintage strat with vintage fret wire, you're probably only gonna get two crown levels out of it. In my experience, I only like two at the max. And medium jumbo frets on the Mexican made 2008 and above and American made strats, um, you could get about three crown levels out of those. So if you see some divots, just understand it has to be crown leveled and you might want to know how many times it's been crown leveled before. Uh, before 2008, the uh, Mexican made strats used a thinner fret wire and that thinner fret wire again back to, I'd say two crown levels max. 
What's nice on the sheet is I gave you a little, uh, I numbered all the frets down to 22 in case you have 22 or 21, depending on if you're buying an older made in Mexico standard, a vintage or the 22 fret strat. And you can also make some notations on whether or not you need to have a setup done. And that again could be part of the negotiation of the price. If it needs that work done, maybe you can have them do that for you and then find out if the guitar feels right. The next thing we want to do is check the neck plate. The neck plate, if it's a Fender, should say Fender on it if it's made in America. The new made in Mexico's have a, a similar logo. Uh, vintage guitars sometimes just have the big Fender F, uh, but the old made in Mexico's have a chrome straight plate with no logos on it. So you have to just keep that in mind if you're looking at the older made in Mexico's. But if it's any kind of American made Fender, uh, you definitely want to see a Fender logo in, on the plate. Uh, and there's different ones for different years. The next thing I also want to see if it's a Made in America, for the most part, they're going to have a micro tilt, which is that hole right there. That Allen wrench will also be the 1 8 Allen wrench that goes in there and fits. So if you want to go in there and test it and make sure it's working fine, that'll do that. And again, this variates through models, through whether it's made in Japan, whether it's, you know, what year it is. But these are general guidelines. Just look for these things. If they don't have them, it just starts the, okay, now what, let's see why it doesn't have that. And for instance, if the plate's different than what I said, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fake. If you do the research and find out, oh, in that particular model, it didn't do that. You just know that more times than not, it will have the logo. Now, if you remove the pickguard and look underneath to see how it's routed, it gets really tricky. Keep in mind that certain early 2000 model fenders have what's called a swimming pool route. It's where it's all routed out like a big swimming pool. Uh, some of the American ones should be humbucker, single humbucker underneath. That's the majority of them. Some vintage style fenders will be single, single, single. Made in Mexico's for the most part are humbucker, single, single. So it gets a little tricky. So the routing patterns don't always necessarily mean anything. A lot of people go off the rule of the where the holes are. If there's one hole, it's made in the USA. If it's one one hole with two small holes. It's made in Mexico. I've talked about that in an older video and that's generally true, but keep in mind it gets a little tricky with the newer model made in Mexico player series. But again, you definitely want to look for those holes uh, and see if that's in there. And then again, kind of can check the model against the specifications. But one thing that all fenders should have is if you remove this plate, you should see QA signatures or decals with serial numbers or barcodes. There's definitely not a case that I've seen where you pull apart a real fender made in Mexico or USA and there's nothing inside the cavity at all. It's very rare to see that. You're gonna see some kind of markings. So just keep in mind, look for those markings. Another thing you wanna do when you're looking at the body is go ahead and hit that tremolo and look at the tremolo. Um, if it has bent saddles, they will say fender on them. You could look to see whether or not it's a six screw or a two point tremolo, but again, there's different versions of fenders and it gets a little tricky. But what I noticed is that Fender, for the most part, does its bridges really well. So when you look at the bridge, look at the chrome. The chrome should look smooth and nice. If it looks cakey, thick, like it's been dipped but not very well, that's a sign that it's an import uh, product and it might not be the original tremolo system in the, in the guitar, or this body may not be the original body. When you see fakes, I don't mean like Chinese import fakes, when you see fake people uh, switching guitars and faking uh, the guitar, the thing that they seem to focus on is the neck. They put a made in Mexico or American neck on some kind of import body assembly. So that's where you're gonna really start detecting is the bridge and the chrome. Pay attention to the chrome, this plate as well too. These plates are made in Corona, California and they're done really clean and nice. So if you look at them and again, the chrome looks cakey and thick, it doesn't look right. Um, that's a sign that something's something's wrong. So be aware of that. Now on the Made in America ones, especially the ones from the 2000s forward and then many before that too, they'll have black springs. That's a nice little thing to notice. The Made in Mexico's tend to have the chrome ones. None of them should have those really rainbow, and I'm not kidding, rainbow colored metal junk springs that you see. So that's a sign that there's something else. The blocks get a little tricky. Um, to, to detect, but keep in mind, I think the bigger detection on the block is to look at the actual plate to see how the plate looks and the saddles. And whether or not they have the solid saddles or not, look at the bridge plate, that tells you a lot. Another thing to figure out if somebody's messed with it is go ahead and look at the pick guard. If it's a modern American Stratocaster, let's say like a made in Mexico or a made in the USA, you should have 11 screws in the pick guard. If it's vintage style, you should have eight screws. And sometimes you'll see a vintage guitar with 11. That means that somebody probably put the wrong pick guard on and drilled those extra holes. Uh, or if you see a, a newer one, it has eight hole screws. Again, somebody's putting the wrong pick guard on there. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, if they put the, the eight screw pick guard on there, it's not a big deal. 
deal, except for those holes don't line up. So that means they also drilled new holes in that guitar. You may want to see uh, what else that they did inside that's not very good. Another easy guideline for the Made in America guitars and Made in Mexico's for the most part is they're going to be one and three fourths inch thick bodies. Um, now there is going to be aftermarkets that are like that, but like this Squire right here where it's real thin, that's usually a dead giveaway. Uh, that they've done something. And I usually see, when I see a fake Fender guitar, in other words, when I say fake, I mean a real Fender neck on a fake assembly, they they go ahead and stick it on a, a, a Squire body is what they end up doing. Well, there you go, a quick reference sheet, just some quick tips on how to look at your Fender Stratocaster to see what issues you might have on your current guitar that you may want to look at, or if you're buying a guitar, what issues you should be looking out for. Either way, it's just a quick reference. Um, like I said, the PDF is free and it's down below. If you have a suggestion for another one of these videos at what other guitar I should do, put that in the comments down below. I'll take the most clicked one. And if this video does pretty well, I'll do yet another video on this subject. As always, I want to thank you so much for returning to the channel and watching these videos. If you're new today please hit the like and subscribe button don't miss the rest and until next time know your gear